My name is Therese Taylor Stinson. I live in Silver Spring, Maryland in the Washington, D.C. area. And currently my faith tradition is Presbyterian I'm in the Presbyterian Church of the United States of America. So my own formation was at the Shalane Institute of Spiritual Formation in Bethesda, Maryland, where I not only went through the spiritual guidance program, but also the deepening contemplative leadership program. that spiritual direction is a covenantal agreement between two people or it could be a group of people. I think that's a more uh, current tradition than the traditional or classic spiritual direction where um, one person agrees to put themselves aside and to be attentive to God for the other or if it's a group then a group of people would agree to put themselves aside for uh, to be attentive to God for the other. I think um, anybody could benefit from uh, coming to a spiritual director. Spiritual direction may not be for everyone. Um, spiritual direction is not psychotherapy. And so if someone has uh, issues or problems um, that they've had in their life that they need to work through, they may want to consider um, therapy as opposed to uh, spiritual direction or at least be both in uh, therapy and spiritual direction. But people come to spiritual direction for a lot of reasons. Um, they may come for the, the most classical reason that people have come spiritual direction at one time was mo mostly between um, people it, that were going into some kind of religious profession, religious vocation. And so people still come to spiritual direction um, when they are in the ordination process um, to become um, ministers or clergy or um, you know some kind of religious professional. Um, other reasons though, especially I think now currently there are many lay people who seek out spiritual direction because they want a deeper relationship with God, um, because they want to be able to understand their spirituality more, um, because they are having some um, extraordinary experience of God which could be either positive or negative. They may feel God's absence or they may feel a very extreme sense of uh, God's presence as love or joy or something that they don't have anyone to um, talk to about and they may come to spiritual direction. Um, I attended a sermon at another church um, not too long ago at the beginning of the Lenten season where um, the minister in her sermon was talking about how there was a Presbyterian survey where they asked, you know, how many people had had some extraordinary experience of God. And somewhere in the high 40% said that they had had such an experience. And then something like 96% of those people said that they hadn't told anybody about it because they didn't think anyone would believe them. So um, the benefit of having a spiritual director is I can't guarantee you that they'll believe everything, but I don't think that's important. They will make the space for you to talk about your own spiritual experience and try to discern for yourself where, where, what that means for you um, in terms of your relationship with God, yourself, or others. I ha actually, most of my directees have been um, people who have not had any experience of spiritual direction. I've had a couple to come to me just out of curiosity because they wondered what it was I was doing. <laughs> and um, when I asked them, which is quite normal for a spiritual director to ask, you know, what is your prayer li life like, um, they can't really um, articulate 
what that is. And so one of the things that um, I started doing was, you know, just telling people to take a few minutes in the morning or whenever um, they feel comfortable doing that because some people are morning people, some are not. But whenever they can find the space and they feel comfortable and they don't have to take a lot of time, but take maybe five minutes and just sit quietly and invite whatever that higher power is for you to be with you in that silence for a few minutes and um, just kind of take note of, you know, what's coming up in you and always just being aware of that presence and just do that, you know, for five minutes. And then if you're comfortable for that, you can kind of try stretching it. And um, actually, um, I found people come back to me later and say, I'm still doing that. And, and just in my everyday going to work and everything, I feel more like I have a presence um, with me. So um, I would say that, you know, we've been kind of taught that prayer means we have to have words or, um, and they have to be beautiful words and well constructed and, and all of that. But um, prayer is um, silence um, anywhere where you invite um, that presence into your awareness and, and it could be an act of doing something, an act of sitting where you're just aware of that presence. It could be words, um, it could be singing, it could be dancing, um, it could be fussing. Um, I, I have to tell you this, I recently went to a retreat with a woman who does African spirituality and she was talking about you know in her tradition um, the way they think of God is um, you know a supreme being and actually in the African tradition there are some levels that you have to go through to get to God there are the ancestors and then the spirits and and then there's God the one God the supreme being and so um, in their village uh, a young boy died um, of a disease I think it was and they were very torn and upset about this young boy's death and so they performed a ritual and the community came together and they played the drums and everything and they called on the ancestors and the spirits to tell God to come down here into the community and to be accountable for this boy's death and so we can even do that we can say come on God you know be accountable for this this thing that I'm struggling with that I don't understand and um, I don't know how it turns out but I think that's prayer also. <laughs>